come on! You're, you're a Hawkeye! And who the hell are you? Welcome back everyone, this is going to be my full Marvel Hawkeye Episode 1 video. They're finally dropping episodes, so if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'll be doing videos for all the episodes, just like all the Marvel Disney Plus series. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs, obviously most of them for the Avengers movies that Hawkeye was in, but also the Matt Fraction Hawkeye comic book run. Also, probably a lot of Daredevil Easter eggs that you may have seen in the background too. I'm doing a giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just leave your favorite Easter egg or moment from the episode on the video. But careful for spoilers, if you have not seen the episode yet, we'll be talking about everything. Since they dropped the first two episodes together, I'll be doing a separate video for episode two that we'll post later tonight. But we'll just start at the beginning and go through shot by shot talking about Easter eggs, WTF moments, and all this foreshadowing that they're setting up for later episodes. Starting with the title of the episode, so episode 1 was titled Never Meet Your Heroes, which is a reference to Kate Bishop actually meeting her hero, Hawkeye, at the end of the episode. Just to clarify when this is taking place, the present day of the series is actually set two years after Avengers Endgame, so we're around Christmas 2025, and that means that it is the latest we've ever been in Marvel Phase 4 in a new project, not counting Loki and Sylvie going to the end of the timeline. If you really want to get technical, that's the furthest forward we've been. Originally, I actually thought that this was going to be Christmas 2024 because I thought it was going to overlap with Spider-Man No Way Home, but it sounds like this is taking place even after Spider-Man No Way Home. So after Doctor Strange fixes whatever Spider-Man does to break reality. But as I said, the story of the Hawkeye series is loosely based on the Matt Fraction Hawkeye comic book run where he trains Kate Bishop to become his successor, but they both continue to exist in Marvel Comics going forward and both use the Hawkeye name. The thing about Hawkeye is that he's not precious about his name. Like, he doesn't care that she uses it. He's happy to let her use the name. Obviously, for the MCU, they're playing a little bit differently. He treats her more like a burden when he first runs into her. Like, okay, I got a problem to clean up. Need to make it home for Christmas with my family. So let's just wrap this up as quickly as possible. The whole idea is that she just slowly grows on him through the rest of the series until eventually they become friends. Most of you are probably loosely familiar with Kate Bishop's origin story in the comics. They made a couple minor changes to it just to fit it within what's happened in the MCU so far, though. But the Marvel intro logo that they're using is just the same updated Marvel Phase 4 intro that they started using during Shang-Chi. So it's just the most recent one that they've been using. They do have custom Hawkeye intros and custom credits, which are all designed to look like the Matt Fraction Hawkeye comic book run art by David Aha. So it's actually probably one of the coolest looking Marvel intros so far. They try to do custom ones for each of the different series. You also might have noticed too that during the outro credit sequence, they show you things that are happening in the future of the series. So it's almost like a teaser for the next episode over the credits. But the actual episode starts in a flashback to 2012 in Kate Bishop's family's home in New York City. It's the day of the Avengers Battle of New York. It picks up right before the start of the battle. The camera does a quick scan of her childhood room just to show you all of her trophies and pictures, just to give you a little idea of her background, how she's really good at sports, she's really good at archery, all these different skills that she's going to eventually develop even more to become the next Hawkeye. She's athletic, she's super resourceful, like she's able to eavesdrop on her parents while they're having their conversation in another room, which they also pay off later in the episode in present day too, with her eavesdropping, just listening to conversations. The pet vet toy here is also foreshadowing for her taking in Lucky the Pizza Dog. During the Matt Fraction run, Hawkeye was the person to rescue Lucky the Pizza Dog, and some of the dynamics were a little bit different. I'll explain some of the differences as we go along through those moments in the episode. All this plot that they're setting up with her parents arguing about how they're running out of money, they're going to go bankrupt, they might have to sell their penthouse apartment, is all meant to be foreshadowing for what happens with her mother eventually developing ties to the mob in New York City. This is where they start to change some things about Kate Bishop's origin story. So in the comics, the reason why she's such a Hawkeye fangirl is because when she was young, she eventually tails her father trying to find out what he's doing and learns that he's having this meeting with a mob. She gets captured by the mob. Hawkeye and the other Avengers just happen to get involved and wind up saving her life. So when Hawkeye saves her life from the mob, she winds up idealizing him and grows up wanting to be a vigilante. During the episode, they just tie that to the Avengers Battle of New York, and she sees this scene of Hawkeye taking out all the shatari on the rooftop and then swinging down. It's the same shot that they put in all the Avengers trailers and all the big highlight reels that they played the last several years. 
Her mother referencing solutions falling out of the sky was meant to be a reference to the Shatari invasion, the Avengers coming to save them, Iron Man fell out of the sky saving them from that giant bomb. You could also call it a reference to Thor and his hammer both falling out of the sky, literally reigning superheroes in New York City. They also kind of set up the dynamic that she has with her mother. So even as a child, it sounds like she had a strained relationship with her. They kind of plays into what's happening during present day. It sounds like her father had some kind of plan to get them out of debt and whatever that plan was, it sounds like her mother just kind of picked it up and ran with it after he died. And that's what became Bishop's security in present day, the business that she runs, which they kind of imply is a little bit shady. And I think that's all meant to be about her ties to the mafia. The pep talk she gets from her father about being able to control choices that you make despite bad weather you might encounter is just meant to foreshadow a lot of her actions she takes later when she's being a vigilante with Hawkeye. And the whole thing with the trick that her mother pulls with the food is also meant to foreshadow that she has some skills herself, like showing you that she's not just some simple rich housewife. After we find out that her father's dead, we go to the funeral, Kate Bishop vows to protect them in case the aliens ever come back. Turns out they did wind up coming back twice, Thanos came back twice with two different armies, and she asks her mother for a bow so that she can train to be just like Hawkeye, become a superhero someday. One of the other things they do with these custom opening Hawkeye title sequences is show you the rest of her story as she grows up to present day, like basically give you a montage of her training herself until we get to present day. And then when we do pick up in present day after Avengers Endgame, like it says present day, this is meant to be, like I said, two years after Avengers Endgame. So it's Christmas in 2025. We're at the school that she's attending right now and they focus on the sign that says Stain Tower, which is a reference to Obadiah Stain from the first Iron Man movie. I'm not sure which school this is, but it's in the New York City area. He was crazy rich, just like Tony Stark's family. So I think one of the reasons why they use his name in particular isn't just to make a cool Iron Man reference. It's meant to be a reference to a really evil rich person. And there's a lot of those in the Hawkeye series because it's all about these really wealthy people in New York City with ties to the mob. Like the really shady black market auction that we see later in the episode. But they use this clock tower sequence to show you some of the skills that she's picked up over the years. Like she scales the outside of the building, then lands the trick shot eventually, but the big twist is she winds up destroying the entire clock tower. It's sort of meant to give you a vibe for the tone of the series. Like there's a lot of crazy WTF action, but it's kind of meant to be like Die Hard in the MCU. They use comedy and action together in the same breath, the same way that the Die Hard movies did. Also, during the Die Hard series, a lot of times during the Christmas holiday, he's trying to make it home to his family, but can't because of a bunch of villains that he's trying to stop. Then they cut to Broadway in New York City where Hawkeye has brought his family, or his kids at least, to see the Captain America Rogers musical. And they, no joke, actually did it like a straight up musical. They wrote a whole bunch of lyrics, a whole bunch of song and dance numbers. Obviously, it's mostly focusing on Captain America, like he's the main protagonist, so it covers everything from his origin story during World War II up through the Avengers movies. Most of the musical that we see, though, takes place during the events of the Battle of New York. And if you're a big Avatar The Last Airbender fan, it's a lot like the Ember Island Players episode of Avatar The Last Airbender, at least the way they play it in the episode, where Team Avatar has to watch a recap of their adventures in the form of a silly play, but it's really bad, so it makes them super embarrassed. It's kind of cringy. So Hawkeye has that same cringy reaction to all this, and he even turns his hearing aids off. I love that they even worked in Captain America's trademark catchphrase to the lyrics, I can do this all day. I can do this all day. He does start to have a mini panic attack when he starts thinking about Black Widow. They said that this is going to be a recurring thing throughout the series, like his mind will continue to go back to Natasha. So she's a big part of the series, even though she's dead in present day. Also, we have all the Yelena Belova stuff with her trying to kill Hawkeye that'll probably pay out later in the series. He jokes about the play not being totally accurate, pointing at Ant-Man. That guy wasn't there. Like they have a version of Ant-Man who's part of the Avengers Battle of New York. They have a Thanos was right joke scribbled in graffiti in the bathroom, post all the memes. He didn't seem particularly bothered by it, but then a random dude bugs him for an autograph while he's mid piss with his dick out. The funny thing about this is this actually happens to a lot of celebrities in real life. So if you've ever seen a celebrity in the bathroom, do not be this guy. Do not be the dude who asks someone for an autograph while they're taking a piss. They wind up bailing on the play about halfway through his family comes out to meet him. You'll remember his daughter Lila from Avengers Endgame. She's played by Joe Russo's daughter in real life and he also calls her Hawkeye. So technically there's like three versions of Hawkeye in the MCU now. 
She literally references Black Widow as his other kids come out. His youngest son, you'll remember, is named Nathaniel Pietro Barton after Quicksilver. And then not too far away at Grand Central Station, Kate Bishop arrives back in the city walking past an ad for the Rogers musical that we saw. There are a couple different times during the episodes where the Rogers musical ads show up. They kind of foreshadow that her mother's getting remarried to Swordmaster. I'll explain him from the comics because he's a big Hawkeye character from the classic comics, but they kind of changed him a little bit for the TV show. But they do this big flyover in New York City in the landscape and all these different landmarks they're showing you, all these different places, are places where they'll have big fight scenes and big action scenes later in the series. So most of the series takes place in and around Midtown New York City between Hell's Kitchen on the west side and then on the east side. It's also around the same area where the Avengers Tower used to be. Like Broadway, for instance, where they just were watching this musical is right next to Hell's Kitchen. So I know a lot of you are wondering about Daredevil Easter eggs and references. There are Daredevil things going on in the episodes, and Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin is rumored to have a cameo in later episodes, so I'll talk about that when we get to those parts of the episodes. The whole thing with her mother asking her to put on a red dress and come to this auction with her is just kind of give you an idea for her personality. Like she shows up wearing a tuxedo instead just to show you that she's more of a tomboy. Like she's not someone who walks around in a lot of dresses. You also notice that even before she runs into Hawkeye, she's wearing purple. Like purple is her color because purple is Hawkeye's color in the comics. They reveal the reason why there's so many swords all over her childhood home is because Swordmaster is now dating her mother and they're engaged to be married. In the comics, Swordmaster's real name is Jack Duquesne. He was Hawkeye's mentor, but during the series, they're playing him more like a villain. They have the big scene with Hawkeye taking his kids to dinner. They talk to his wife, Laura. I know everybody was wondering what happened to her in the trailer. Is she dead? What's going on? They just didn't show her because there wasn't a lot of footage with her in the episodes. The whole reason why he's here alone with his kids and she's not there is because he's trying to make up for lost time that he missed when they were growing up while he was busy working for Nick Fury, S.H.I.E.L.D., and then the Avengers. The waiter brings him complimentary food, thanking him for saving the city during the Battle of New York and Avengers Endgame. This kind of makes him uncomfortable several times in the episodes, just people saying, oh, thank you so much. Oh, I'm such a big fan of yours. His whole thing is that he really does not like this kind of attention. He actually actively tries to avoid it. Like later when he's talking to Kate Bishop in future episodes, he talks about how he's not trying to sell any kind of merch like some of the other Avengers characters. They set up the whole running plot with Jack Duquesne's uncle, Armand, who winds up getting murdered later. You find out a little bit about him. He seems kind of shady too, but he doesn't seem quite as evil as Swordmaster or quite as shady as what's going on with Kate Bishop's mother. Like she overhears the argument with Armand and her mother where it seems like he's found out some secret about her business and it's super sus, but her mother tries to blow it off like it's nothing. In the comics, it was her father that had the ties to the mob. I think just for the series, they just switched that and made it her mother instead. Her eavesdropping on the really shady black market auction is just a callback to the beginning of the episode with her eavesdropping on her parents. When the auctioneer says they're traveling back in time for the first item, that's a reference to Avengers Endgame and the Time Heist mission, but they start by auctioning off a dinosaur skull, then they auction off Hawkeye's Ronin sword and Hawkeye's Ronin costume. You notice that Swordmaster is obsessed with getting Hawkeye's Ronin sword, and I think that's because of a connection that he probably has to Hawkeye Ronin during the five-year time jump. Like, it seems like there are a number of different characters associated with the mob that have ties to him that go back to that five-year time jump. The auctioneer makes several references to many very powerful mob members being killed by the sword itself. When his uncle holds up number 124, that's a reference to Avengers 124, an issue where they faced off against Swordmaster. The number 102 that Swordmaster holds up is also a reference to Avengers number 102, which is a Grim Reaper storyline and the big Hawkeye storyline. Most of these numbers are all just Swordmaster specific Avengers comics. And I think they're trying to use them just to tell you this Swordmaster has deep ties to the mob. He's doing something shady. Also, I think the reason why he's so obsessed with Ronan's sword, Hawkeye Ronan probably killed someone or almost killed him during the five-year time jump. They set up this whole running plot with his inheritance and his uncle, like, oh, I might not have money now, but I will inherit a bunch eventually, foreshadowing him killing his uncle with the Ronan sword at the end of the episode. If it wasn't clear from all the clues in the first couple of episodes, I am pretty certain that it was him who killed his uncle with the Ronan sword. Then they reveal the tracksuit mafia is about to hit the auction trying to steal a watch that was from the Avengers compound. They don't really explain who the watch belonged to because none of the Avengers really wore watches except for Tony Stark who wore a wristband which was part of his Iron Man gear with part of his suit tapped into it. But the watch itself does not look like Iron Man's Stark tech. 
The number 268 is a reference to Avengers 268, which is a big Kang the Conqueror storyline, who is a time travel villain controlling the timeline in the MCU as we know so far. So the watch, a timepiece, Kang the Conqueror, time travel, you get the connection, just reminding you about Kang the Conqueror during the future of Marvel Phase 4. Thank you very much, Loki and Sylvie. Kind of weird to see a Kang the Conqueror Easter egg in a ground level action story like Hawkeye. But the whole vibe that they want to get across here with Kate Bishop is that she feels in this scene here during the attack like she did during the Battle of New York, only this time she's trying to go full Hawkeye being a superhero and use all these skills that she's learned over the years. So she puts on the Ronin costume and starts going after all the tracksuit bros. That funny way they have of talking, saying bro in every single sentence, even on their van it says trust a bro. That's right out of the Matt Fraction Hawkeye run, like every other word out of their mouth is bro. They're kind of like this bumbling group of idiots during the series and during the Hawkeye comic book run. It didn't seem like Swordmaster recognized Kate Bishop inside the mask, but he does get surprised at the sight of the Hawkeye Ronin costume like, Ronin, what? That's why I said I think that he had a run-in with Hawkeye Ronin during that five-year time jump and it's why he's so obsessed with Hawkeye's sword. But if it wasn't clear, nobody knows at this point, at least nobody in New York City, knows that Hawkeye was Ronin. They think that Ronin was a completely separate ninja vigilante. Then even though you don't actually see his face till later in the episode, this character that she fights here, who gets kind of surprised by her and is not in a tracksuit, is Kazi. He's also called the clown in the comics. He's sort of like a Marvel parody of the Joker character, like he actually wears clown makeup later in the series. He's one of the big antagonists during the Matt Fraction Hawkeye comic book run, and within the MCU series, he's just a bigger part of the tracksuit mafia. But he is also somebody who has ties to Kingpin in the comics. There are several characters in the Hawkeye series that have ties to Kingpin, which is why I start talking about a lot of Daredevil Easter eggs. Kate Bishop then winds up saving Lucky the Pizza Dog and taking him back to her apartment. They never really explain what was going on with the watch or why someone wanted it stolen or who it belonged to, but they do kind of imply that a lot of people had stolen things from the rubble of that final battle with Thanos in the Avengers compound. It's sort of like what they were doing with the Vulture in Spider-Man Homecoming, with him trading in a lot of black market tech stolen from the rubble of the Shatari invasion. Kate winds up giving Lucky a slice of pizza that leads to him getting his name later in the episode. She literally calls him Lucky the Pizza Dog. And we find out more about what's going on with her mother's business, Bishop Security. She uses software to track people on her phone, which seems kind of shady to begin with, but it does kind of explain where all of her mother's money is coming from. Like earlier in the episode, she referenced building her business from the ground up. Like she's not someone who came from money, which I think is another connection to the Kingpin because Kingpin kind of did the same thing. She winds up following the trail of evidence back to Armand's and finds his body, also makes note of the monogram butterscotch candy. I don't know what the deal with butterscotch candy and old people is, but even in real life, my own grandparents always had butterscotch candy in their house. I don't know what the deal is. I think it's just something with old people, maybe. The butterscotch candy winds up being a big plot point in episode two. I'll talk about this during my episode two video when they pay that off. But even at this point in the episode, I feel like most people probably assume that the stab wound in the back probably came from the Hawkeye Ronin sword because of the whole inheritance that they were teasing at the auction. Swordmaster probably killed him to gain his inheritance. And the fact that Kate Bishop runs into the tracksuits right outside of Armand's home kind of confirms that connection, making it sound like Swordmaster and Kate Bishop's mother were connected to the tracksuits which were raiding that black market auction. She winds up trying to take them all on by herself until Hawkeye himself shows up to try and find out what's going on with this new mystery Ronin, which he saw in the news like, oh hell no, what's going on with that Ronin costume? Why is this coming back to haunt me? He winds up kicking all their asses pretty easily and then rips her mask off and they end on that WTF moment like, wait a minute, who the hell are you? Paying off the title of the episode, Never Meet Your Heroes, as Kate Bishop comes face to face with her hero, Hawkeye. If you spotted any big Easter eggs in the episode that I didn't reference in the video, just write them below in the comments. Like I said, my episode two video will post next later tonight. It'll take me a little while to finish the video, but that should be up pretty soon. Each of the episodes after this will just air one per week like normal. You can click here for that Hawkeye episode two video. I'll update the link as soon as I post the video. And you can click here for my new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer video with Venom and Morbius Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.